Hi, guys. Welcome to a special Touch by Prayer. I have John Natale with me from John Natale Ministries. You can actually go to his website, which is johnnatale.wordpress.com. So, okay, so I just wanted to just give a little bit of a, a background about some of the things that um, that God has been doing because John, uh, we're, we're just going to kind of jump right in here because this is going to be a very power packed show. If people who, if you have friends who are very interested, who've been following Q and are very interested in what the, what God is doing in our government, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how God is using dreams and he's also using his prophets to, to speak about things. And so John, you know, you are a prophet of God. You have been having all these incredible downloads from the father about our president, about our country. You've been writing um, different words. I've been sharing your words on, on my page. I've been sharing them because they've just been so good. So if you guys want to start sharing this broadcast, share, 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 share. Let's get the truth out. Let's just start getting the truth out. So welcome to Touch by Prayer, John. This is, um, I'm really excited about this show. <laughs> me too, Lisa. It's awesome, man. A lot of warfare, but it's all good. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. We're going to talk about warfare because let me tell you, it has been, it has been a little bit of a crazy thing lately. Um, I, I think because some of the censorship and because of some of the things that have been happening, it, it's the, the warfare has just been unbelievable, but we're, but we're here. We're gonna we're gonna share what we have to uh, share. I'd like to. I'd actually like to start off with a dream because there are so many people who are actually going to listen to this broadcast who are having Trump dreams, who are having dreams about our government, who are having dreams about some of the things that God is doing, and it's so important. So if you've been having dreams, share it in the comments. Start. Let's start sharing. Let's start telling people that God is speaking. He is doing something, and um this dream is really quick. Um, uh, and I'm going to break it down as quickly as I can. I dreamt <clears throat> that I was in Washington, DC. I was at the, the Trump hotel in Washington, DC. And I was walking and I, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is how, what I saw. I, I actually saw the, um, uh, the Burger King mascot, you know, the Burger King guy that they now have. So it was the Burger King guy. And I looked inside of the Burger King guy and I looked inside and I saw it was President Trump. And I said to him, I said, I said, Mr. President, I said, where are your security guards? And he said to me, they don't like me. Mm. They don't like me. And I said, no, 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 that's not true. And so I went and I got his security and I said, I said, you, I said, the president's inside of the Burger King mascot. <laughs> Come on. It's so significant. It's really so significant. So, and they, and then the dream kind of shifted. And then I was walking and I was walking with him and I was walking with Melania. And so it was myself, it was, it was president Trump. And then it was the first lady Melania Trump. And we were, we were walking together, the three of us. And he was actually wearing, he was wearing a linen suit and it was beige, wasn't anything crazy. And he was talking to me and he was telling me that the, that the people are very angry at him and that, that, that they don't like him. And I said, that's not true. I said, that's not true, Mr. President. I said, you just need to, you just need to say you're sorry. I said, and they will, they're going to turn and they're going to love you. That was the dream that we walked into this huge, huge celebration buffet. And President Trump started to tell me about all the food that I should try. And he was very sweet and he was very like, definitely try, you're gonna love this. You're gonna try this and you're gonna love this. And oh, go and, go and get this. And he was being very specific about the things that I would like. And he was very quick to share that information. And then he went and he sat down. That was the dream. Now the interpretation that I got is that there is a king who is sitting in our presidency, but he still has, he, it's, he's still kind of hidden. That, that, that is, he has a king mentality that he's building a kingdom, but people aren't necessarily seeing who he really is. And so he's still kind of hidden beneath 
I felt this like almost like a royalty. And I felt that the that the uh, the secret service that they weren't his friends is that God that God is showing me that not everybody who looks like they're there to protect our president is actually there to protect our president. Mm -hmm. And I think that based on some of the things that we've been seeing, especially in our um, if you walk, depending on what news you're watching, <laughs> you're you're going to see that not everybody is, who says that they are for him are actually for him. And, and I actually had this dream last year. I had that dream last year. I didn't have this dream recently. This is a last year dream. But what I started to see is that the that dream that I had last year is starting to make a lot more sense that that we that people are going to start to see that some of the things that our president um has uh, been has done or has been supposedly has done you know that that there is going to be a shifting and people are going to start to love him because that's exactly i said they're going to they're going to accept your forgiveness and or they're going to accept your apology and they are going to love you that was very specific in the dream so if you have any thoughts or anything <clears throat> you would like to share mr <laughs> natalie i would love to hear it <clears throat> well you know, the, the word we released just the other day, mm -hmm. um, that word went really, really deep and had a huge impact. Um, and in that part of that word, it was also talking about how the hearts have already started the change and how this president, how God, what God is using in this president is, um, I told this to somebody the other day, I said, this has nothing to do with the natural things of this world. This tenure has nothing, I'm going to say it again, has nothing to do with the natural things of this world. It's all a spiritual thing. It's all the, 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 the manifestations of the spirit realm that manifest in the natural realm, but it's, it's about the heart. Ever since this president has taken office, literally the heart of this nation has been exposed on both sides of the spectrum. And what God is looking to do is to restore the heart, and he's in the process of doing it, but he always sends somebody down your path that's going to stir the pot first and bring you what you weren't expecting. So this is a, definitely a heart issue that exposes the church, that exposes the believer's heart, but also exposes the heart of the, of the unbeliever. And at the end of the day, what we're about to see is a great heart change and a reflection towards Christ. That's so good. That is so good. So, you know, it's interesting because in this particular dream that I had, he was, like I said, he was hiding inside of a king. <laughs> and and it's interesting because I kind of feel like that that that's his heart cry, is that he wants to, not that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to be very careful about how I word this, but, do you know how like there are some kings who really love their kingdom? They just yeah. love their kingdom and they are for their people and they love, they care so much that they're willing to lay down their life. That's what I feel. I don't feel like, like our president actually does this as a job, but as a love, that it's a love offering. That's at least what I kind of feel. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. That's exactly what God's doing. Um, and he used an individual that that has been labeled throughout his past as just the opposite as a hard abrasive uncaring person that really doesn't like anybody and doesn't want anyone to get in his way and it's just the opposite and you see you can see it throughout the bible lisa that whenever god does anything it's always basically the opposite of what man was expecting it's always the opposite because it's never supposed to be forecasted. If you can forecast what God is doing or what he's going to bring, then it's not fresh and it's not new. It's something completely different. And, and the Bible says that his ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. All right. So he brings something in our path that completely stirs the pot and causes us to respond. And you're either going to respond one way or the other. There's no riding of the fence. There's no gray area. No, that and that is so good because I think that we're, you know, look, we we just went through this entire Mueller investigation and we found out. Guess what? No collusion. Ha! Ah. So, what were you surprised by that? Like, really? Um, <laughs> realistically, throughout the years that I've been following this whole tenure, um, 
no, I've known since day one, nothing has been uh, behind the scenes because there isn't anything behind the scenes. Nope. Um, nope. And there will be more. There oh, yes, will be more will. over the course of the of yep. this first tenure, um, yep. simply because um, this whole thing, Lisa, this whole thing is about discrediting and dishonoring. Yep. All right. I agree. Um, you know, the Book of Romans talks about honoring those that are in authority. Um, and the greatest authority right now on the earth, in the natural realm, is the president. The greatest yeah. authority in the you know in the universe is God. And the, what the enemy loves to do is he loves to dishonor. He he uses people to dishonor God. So we are in a situation right now where this president, for the first time in history, I believe, has been the most dishonored president in office by a government and by a people, simply Absolutely. because we're we're trying to dishonor him and discredit him. And literally, we're not trying to find any good out of him. We're trying to find anything that we could possibly find and it's amazing because the Bible says that you got to honor those that are in authority. And especially for the believers, that it is so super critical because we, we're in a, I, I said this too the other day, we're in a civil war in this nation. We're in a spiritual civil war in the nation. We're in a spiritual civil war in our government. The Bible, remember this, come on, this Bible, is, this word is ancient of days right here. The Bible says that if a house divided cannot stand. Hello. Right. That's, right. That's not talking about the church, by the way, just the church. That's talking no. about our nation, our government, our and family. our government right now is completely divided. Yep. And Everything. the reason and the reason why God had put this person in place was to literally expose how divided it is, but literally show how divided the bride is. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. So so let me let let's just go back a little bit. For those who did not read that word that you released last Friday, can you go ahead and read that just so that they can hear it? Yeah, I actually have it here. That was probably from the from the time that we had first interviewed by CBN a few years back. Um, this word actually went crazy. Mm -hmm. um, um, I wasn't expecting it to get that much of an impact that like it has, um, mm -hmm. but it went kind of off the hook. Um, and it's, it's interesting what God is doing because, you know, I've been releasing a lot of words regarding the presidency and the administration, North Korea, over the course of the last years, Israel, Netanyahu. But, but the Lord showed me something very specific about this word. I'm going to read it. But I haven't released a word like this in a long, long time about what's coming several years down the road. So you want me to read the whole word? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to read it for you. It says, so the mysteries are about to be revealed. What is next? How can this be? As for what I'm going to do, nothing can stop the forward movement and positions that will be kept in place and moved out of place. For a great change is coming to the land called Washington, D.C., and to the soil that is represented by the name called United States. For this man that is called Trump has been listening to my voice, and he, is, and he has been responding to my leading. He has answered the call to honor the land that which is mine, the land called Israel. He continues to honor that which, which needs to be honored. And in this, your land is prospering and will continue to prosper. Now listen and watch. For in the next several months ahead and in the completion of the first term, an awakening shall come and be revealed in the land called D.C. For many will think that an end will come and a new beginning shall proceed with a new voice. But this will not be so. For I have the last say and the people of this nation have had their hearts already softened. A second term shall follow from a first, and what comes in those next four years will be more than possibly imagined, for it will be remembered for a time and time again. Even when this man leaves his office, there will be historic scenarios that the people will embrace in their heart. They will say that we judged unnecessarily, and we did not see the heart that was formed before the foundations of the world to help people and a land gain their freedom and strength to be positioned for what's to come. Now again, I say, as was spoken before, the man called Netanyahu will be strengthened and his relationship with the man called Trump will go down in history as one that formed the nations into a place of peace and prosperity. For nothing can touch this alliance and nothing can touch the land called Israel. For she will gain in numbers and she will gain in such a strength that even the giants that come to try to intimidate will be put down like the Philistine champion called Goliath. Now again, in this term that this president is completing, and in the term that he will begin again, 
the heavens will remain open and pour out such blessing and opportunity for the people to receive and be filled with plenty. For this will bring such advancement and will facilitate what has been promised. But listen again, for when the second term is complete, the windows will be shut and a famine shall come in ways that was not thought of by man. Man will say that this wasn't possible, but it must come. But there will be no alarm for those who put their trust in the Lord. For things will come and cause confusion and disruption in the land, but it is necessary for the carrying out of very specific plans that wait in the balance. A humbling will come, and for those that have heeded the words and trusted in me, their storehouses will not run dry, but will be kept for a time and a time again. Keep your eyes on the people that represent specific offices in D.C., for many new faces will come and be placed into new seats, and they will be ones that bring peace and comfort to many. Many voices that have come against me will be removed suddenly and, and some over time, and the unjust shall become witnesses from the sidelines as their power was removed and not to be restored. Watch and pray, for we are in the times of times that bring many signs from above to show a supernatural power and also a comforting grace. That's a good word. And I'm going to tell you that uh, that that sits with me really. Yeah, because that's some of the things that God's been talking to me about. And he's been he's been showing me about that as things start to get uncovered, that we as a church need to start praying. We need to start praying for peace because just a, just as this investigation has just been done, there, there's going to be some more stuff, but the uncovering, the uncovering everybody thinks is coming from our president, but really it's coming from the Lord. The Lord is uncovering and he is going to expose every single lie, every single dirty thing that is being done, every deception. He is going to expose it. And when he exposes it, that is going to be either an awakening or it's going to be a turning away. That's really what's going to happen because either people are going to believe it or they're going to be so disgusted, they're just going to turn away from everything. And the Lord's been showing me about <clears throat> some of the, I saw, I saw the Lord show me that he was going to unmask different individuals. And I actually, I, I was just getting dressed. I was getting, I was actually putting my makeup on and, and um, I started to, to see his hand and I saw his hand and I saw him ripping off masks and it was definitely the hand of the Lord. And behind the mask was all this, this evil. And the Lord said to me, he says, no longer will the unrighteous be able to hide behind righteousness. And that is what we're starting to see, because as we started to see the manipulation and the lies and, and the deceit that was in our government, that we're trying to put something against our president who were, who were doing all this fake stuff and, and trying to say that that's something that was not true. Now there are people, there are people who can't even believe that some of this stuff is happening. They can't even believe that, that now that it's been shown to, to be truth, that there was nothing, there never was anything, you know? And it, and I think President Trump actually said in the very beginning, because this is when I first saw the Lord saying that, that he was unraveling it. He said that um, it, it was on the bottom of uh, Fox News. It said, President Trump says, this is a witch hunt. And the Lord said, get ready for the, he said, get ready for the, um, for the witch hunt. And he said, and so, but that is not just, and that, I think that's what, what is really important. Like when, when God comes to, to clean house, he's not just going to start at the white house and be done. He's cleaning houses. I mean, he's doing, he's doing the white house. He he's doing the church houses and guess what? He's doing your house. He's going after everything because he wants a spotless bride. He's trying to get us to, to, to step up and to become everything that he's called us to be. And sometimes in the exposing comes the repentance and comes the change that, that causes, that brings forth the purity. That's correct. We released a word several weeks ago, Lisa, about Trump and the Lord spoke to me about the, uh, the anointing that Joseph carried. And it was the Joseph mm -hmm. inheritance that we released simply because um, the brothers didn't understand the mystery. This whole thing's a mystery. And people that don't see in the spirit realm don't understand it. They don't, they don't recognize it. They, 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 
they can't put their their hands on it. You know, they, they just can't they can't figure it out of what this whole thing is all about. And, you know, it, with Joseph, the thing about that was if they only knew if his brothers only knew what this was all about, of how of a restoration of people, then obviously they probably would have had to change the heart. But now watch. We'll see as believers, many of us, many of us, well, we want God just to fix it and fix things and, you know, make it everything, you know, all smooth. But he can't do it and he won't do it. And he allows specific things to take place, like all of these accusations and everything, because it it creates scenarios and it and it sets things in motion for the next thing. If 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 Joseph didn't get thrown in a pit, if he didn't get thrown into slavery, he would have never went to Egypt. It was all a plan. If he didn't get, you know, accused wrongfully, he wouldn't have been put in a dungeon and had an opportunity to prophesy over a couple of guys. There's a reasons why, see, the enemy is not all knowing. He's ridiculously stupid. Okay. He has no understanding and un revelation of tomorrow. So he he and a lot of people they don't, don't they don't get it. He he throws these things to try to bring something down, but God actually uses, he actually uses the plan of the enemy to bring something out and up. And every, I've said this so many times over the course of this president's tenure. And as I said before, regarding this ministry over and over again, it doesn't matter who this person was in office, whether it was, his name was Trump or Smith or whatever, God is using this person. So it could have been anyone, but he's using this person for such a time as this. But as I said before, it doesn't matter what's happening all around us, that the, the negativity that the enemy is trying to bring out. And I've said this before, nothing is going to stop the forward progress of what God wants to do in this nation. You can do anything you want. You can throw, bring up any accusation. It, it's not going to hold and it's not going to stop because these prophetic words of, about this president have been coming from years ago, years ago. So and it's and it's it to me, it's it's comical. And I believe, and I look at the times when the Lord just laughs at this whole thing because no one's going to stop the very thing that God has in place. Nothing, and it's, and it's actually the more and more you resist this man, the stronger he gets. I love the that. more and more you resist this man, the the greater the spiritual manifestations that in the natural realm take place, and you're going to see it. And the more and more he honors Israel, the more and more this nation gets blessed. So good. But as I said, the window will shut. After the second term, and you can say all day you want, you can come against this. Like I said, it doesn't matter what person's in place. This is the person that God's using for this term and the next term, and nothing will change that. Yep, I agree with that. I totally agree with that, and and it's interesting because, and I think you and I discussed this because um, when uh, when the Lord showed me that President Trump, like, well, cause I said to him, I said, why, why? Trump, why president? Why is he going to be the president? And the Lord said to me very specifically, he's going to bring prayer back in school. And he also is going to overturn Roe versus Wade. Now, what's really interesting, look at where we are. Now, this was in 2015. Look at where we are. Look at what's happening. Look at where, like today, they're actually the movie Unplanned. And if you have, if, go see this movie Unplanned. It talks about Planned Parenthood. Go see this movie, support Christian movies, support the cause. If you stand for nothing, if you don't stand up, you stand for nothing, right? Because sometimes we have to take a stand. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, even this show, this show could be controversial because there are people and believers who don't like our president and do pray against him, which, which John, I'd really like you to talk about Christian witchcraft. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I well, really want you to talk about <laughs> Christian witchcraft because I know you understand that. And that needs to be said. Come on now. That needs if you're to a be believer, said. if That's you're a right. believer, number one, if you're a believer, I'm going to say it. Say for it. For the record. If you're praying against your president and you're a believer, you better seriously reconsider who you're following. That's right. All yeah. right. Simply because the word of God says, that you have to honor those that are in authority, all right? And it doesn't matter if you believe in this president or not, okay? And as a prophetic voice, um, I don't, we, we don't endorse and, and speak, okay, this person, this person, we're releasing what God's telling us to release. 
And at the end of the day, this isn't about a party. Nope. If this is about a party, it's game over. This isn't about a party. This is about people. All right. And God loves everyone unconditionally. And this is about having a valuable interest in someone else's life and this nation. And even in the in the words of Lincoln and how this, you know, the, the, the government for the people, by the people, okay, of the people. It's about people and it's about freedom and it's about liberty and it's about understanding people's hearts and about having a valuable interest in people's hearts. But you cannot be a believer and pray against someone in authority and expect God to bless you because if you, if, whether or not you believe it or not, let me tell you something. When you go to work tomorrow, okay, and you don't believe in the president of your company, you're not you're not praying him out of his position. And if you make that voice known that you don't like the president of your company, and you make you're not going to have a job tomorrow. But God says you got to honor those that are in authority, whether or not you believe. It. How about praying for him instead of praying against him? Because it's 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 in, you're in a situation right now that the word of God says in Romans that if you come against those that are in authority, what's coming on you and what's coming on your nation? All right. So it's so super critical that as the body of Christ, we're not supposed to be praying against our president. We're supposed to be praying for our president, whether or not you believe it or not. And if you don't believe that he's supposed to be president, you should be praying with a mindset. Lord, change his heart. Lord, change his heart that he hears you or change his heart that he can that he makes wise decisions, but never coming against him. That's right. Hey, listen, as a father of six children, six boys, if I have three boys that are not that are not listening to me and not following the rules, am I praying against them? Am I telling them to get out? No, I'm not telling them to get out. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep encouraging them and keep speaking in their life and being a light so they can grab a hold of it. And know that at the end of the day, we're going to work together as a team. So it's really, that's where I look at that word of God. It says the, the house that's divided shall not stand. Hey, listen, I said it before. I'm going to say it again. Our nation's in a spiritual civil war. That's right. Okay? I totally agree and with that. Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, you see, yes, that was about slavery. And you know what? And he did an amazing thing, but he knew the cost. He knew the cost. He had to do something to come against it, to break that dividing wall. Now we're back in a civil war in our nation where we have two, two people groups. And I'm not talking about Democratic Party and Republican Party. I'm talking about people that are for him and against him. And we're against him just because I want to be against him. And it's and we got to get to that place that, you know what, let's get away from all that stuff and see ahead. Because if these people could actually see what was coming down the line, you wouldn't want to know what's coming down the line several years from now. Yeah. So God wants to change the heart now. And you're going to see a major move of God take place in Washington, D.C. before even the first term is even over. Yep. You know, it's really interesting. One of the now my husband, Rob, doesn't ever have visions, but he had a vision and he actually saw the Washington Monument and he saw the Washington Monument and he saw a sword come shooting down from heaven go through the Washington Monument that that like cut it, that cut the Washington Monument and turned it into a, a cross, went mm, right through on. it. And so it's been it's been very, very interesting because, you know, there's if, if you're listening to well, depending on who you're listening to, there's so much stuff out there. There there's all kinds of conspiracies. There's all kinds of, you know, what if it's this or what if it's that we're, we're talking about, a, you know, the Illuminati. We're talking about these secret things, you know. So, so I was like asking the Lord and the Lord started to talk to me and he started to talk about like what the truth is, because we always, I, and I, I, I said this when we were praying to, to get president Trump into office, because there were some people and believers who were like, they were so afraid of him. And one of the things that uh, I said to a person is I said, ask the Lord to show you his heart for our country. You know, we're so quick to start believing, but you know what? We can ask the Lord to show us something and he will show us something. And so what the Lord started to, to tell me is he said that there has been witchcraft in our White House since the 1960s. 
since the 1960s. Now, that to me was like a big, like, okay, so I did a little bit of investigation and I started to see that there are some things. So, you know, there, I think we have to not dismiss everything that we hear because it just sounds like so outrageous. But, you know, if we look at what the Bible says, and if we look at what happened in the Bible, and there were lots of pagan rituals, and there were lots of sacrifices of babies and all this kinds of stuff, it was all in the Bible. It was there. Go all the way through, okay? Well, if Christianity could continue, that stuff can continue because we're always going to be fighting we're fighting a fight of, of good and we're fighting something against darkness and there's light and there's darkness. And that's, that's pretty much what it is. It's just, right. and it's, it's not, it's not because people are bad. It's because they're in the dark. They don't see, they're not seeing the truth. They don't understand. They've been indoctrinated and they've been tricked and fooled. And what the Lord is telling me and what he's been showing me is he said, like, you, like he's been showing you, John, the stuff that's going to come out when it comes out, there is going to be such a shaking because people are not going to know what's true anymore. They're going to be like, get, get out. It's going to be like almost like finding a UFO hidden underneath the White House. And they're going to be like, what the heck was that? How the heck is there a UFO under the White House? And we didn't know about it. It's, it's going to shake people's minds. It's going to really kind of confuse them. I do believe that. And I also believe that you know, the more and more that um, this tenure continues and the more, see, as I said before, every time the enemy tries to, every time the enemy tries to bring something out and to bring destruction, there's more exposure um, I, with the individuals that are trying to actually pull them down. So what happens is the, the enemies, come on, God, the enemy actually, because remember, the enemy hates everybody, even though he's using individuals to, to, to discredit and dishonor righteousness, the enemy actually, Satan is actually using that very, those very tools to destroy the very people that he's using. So it actually keeps, it exposes the darkness more and more and more and more. And you'll see that more and more. But you see, there's, there's, the, 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 there's very specific things that are being that are being taken place that are, are taking place right now in Washington. Um, and it's actually they're losing. They're actually losing their strength. All right. And there's new voices that are coming out that weren't there before. And the older voices that were there. I spoke about this several times throughout the last year, year and a half of voices that were there will all of a sudden be silenced. And they wouldn't, the, the power wouldn't be there anymore. Just like this word that came out just a few days ago, that the unjust would lose its power and watch from the sidelines, never to be restored again. And you're going to see that very specific voices that had very specific power will not have a voice anymore. It'll be literally you. stripped from them. Yep. And and that's why the enemy is bringing in brand new material right now. Brand yep. new. You can see it. It's so obvious. It's like uh, the next battalion that's mm -hmm. coming, the next generation that's mm -hmm. coming in. But what's yep. happening is the next generation. And remember, God still, at the end of the day, God loves everyone. That's right. Okay. He doesn't that's just right. say, oh, I love you guys. And these guys are the wicked. No, no, yep. no, no, no. If you don't, okay, it's not about that. It's about he yep. loves everyone. That's All right. right. But there's another battalion. It's a new generation of people that are coming in right now are trying to pull him down. All right. And uh, but you see, all that's doing is they're imploding. Yep. OK, they're imploding. And there's actually a, uh, there's actually it's almost chaos right now yep. in the nation. And that's what takes place. Chaos always takes place before something comes out. And all of a sudden the the you know, whenever. <laughs> come on, God, when the disciples were out on the boat. And it got so crazy out on the boat. That's controlled chaos. All right. They're in the boat. They have nowhere else to go. The winds are contrary. Controlled chaos. We don't have a clue what's going on. And all of a sudden, when they least expect it, the Lord appears on the water. All right. And there's a showdown right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now watch. The Lord doesn't. He doesn't. Okay. He doesn't. Come on, God. He set these guys up on purpose. 
Okay, he didn't he didn't tell them to go out in the water and the enemy stirred up the waters. The enemy didn't stir up the waters that night. The nope. Lord created that scenario on purpose to, in order for them to Peter to take a risk That's and it. to pull out the very thing that was inside of him. The yep. reason why this man is in tenure as a president is to pull out the very thing that's in the bride that's been dormant. Okay. This nation right now, we're not in this nation. Come on, God. This nation, okay, we're not in any move of God right now. There isn't any move of God taking place anywhere in this nation. Because this nation is so divided, Lisa, spiritually. Okay. Sure. They're hearing two voices. There is no move of God taking place in this nation. Okay. And the reason why is simply because we're all over the map with our mindset. And I was just telling one of my sons this earlier. We're the only nation on this globe that has so much turmoil governmentally that yep. you can see parties fighting and believers fighting and Christians that can't, that are, even the body of Christ is operating just like the government, one side yep. and the other. Okay. And we think we're experiencing a move of God. No, a move of God is coming where he's about to literally take one person like a Joseph and put him in a position. OK, like Joseph's right now in the second in command and and stir the pot so much, but so mm -hmm. much turmoil to what before he got to that place. Come on. Yep. And then all of a sudden he and the veil comes off of Joseph's face and he reveals himself. Yep. And that's where we're headed. Yep, where the I brothers agree. walk down that aisle and all of a sudden Joseph really takes off the veil and shows himself who he really is and what you've been really fighting. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to happen before this tenure closes. This first that's one is that the Lord's going to show himself who you've been fighting and you can't fight this anymore. And I nope. told this to so many people, you can't fight. Natural weapons can't defeat spiritual authority. Nope. It doesn't matter what you say, what you speak, what you come against. It's not going to diminish the very thing that God is doing in this nation. No, I agree with that 100 percent. And I also it, it's interesting. The, the two things that you you brought up was about the storm. <clears throat> the thing about it, it the, God will always use a catalyst to pull out something that is hidden beneath somebody. He's going to pull out something with with David to show that David was a warrior, to show that he was capable of becoming king. He had to take down the catalyst. He had to take down Goliath. Just Come like on. with Peter, Peter, who was afraid, he was afraid of everything. <laughs> he was afraid of dying. But but when he saw Jesus on the water, he said, if it's you, Lord, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. And come he, on. with that, he's the only one who stepped out of the boat. He's the come only on. one because on. he knew that if Jesus could do it and Jesus said it was okay for him to do it, he would be safe. It's just when he took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the storm, when you looked at the at the waves, is once we take our eyes off of our Father, once we take our our eyes off of Jesus, is when we start to see the trouble. The Lord's been really showing me. Um, I and it, it's very interesting because I I just had a um this this vision. I just had a vision just um two days ago, and I was in worship, and and Jesus came to me, and, he, and all He was telling me was, "Don't worry." Don't worry. But then I had a vision the next day and he was in a wheat field and I saw him in the wheat field and he had his tallit on. He had this his covering and I could see the blue lettering on the inside. It was I it was like a blue and he was in the wheat field and I saw his eyes as he was looking over the horizon and he was looking over all the wheat and I saw him and his gaze was was like he was just he was not moved. He was just surveying the entire piece of property as he was looking and I saw his fingers go down and I saw him touch very, very gently the top of the wheat and he and I was in the vision and he called me over and he pointed to the sun and he showed me the sun. He said, and he said, look at the sun. And I saw the sun just slightly move to go down. And I knew at that moment that God is saying that the sun is coming down. You can't harvest in the dark. That's right. You can only harvest while the sun is there. And That's if that right. sun is starting to set, you have a shorter time to That's get right. it done. That's but you can't harvest if the if the wheat's not ready. That's right. So he was showing me two things. He was showing me that the wheat, 
because he did he didn't crumble it he was still very careful with the very top so that means it wasn't quite ready mm -hmm. but then he showed me that the sun is starting to set and i so i was like okay so i i'm like okay game on let's do this <laughs> so so this is this is what we have to start doing as a church we have to start praying and and the way that we need to start praying in unity is just thy kingdom come thy will be done here That's on right. earth That's right. if we just do one prayer and just say thy will be done that's it lord that's thy right. will be done in our presidency thy will that's be right. done in our government thy will that's be right. done in if we just say those words thy will be done we are all praying in agreement we are all praying his will because it is his will and we are going to start to see a unity that we haven't had before because as you were saying john we're all over the place i don't believe in speaking in tongues i don't believe in this i don't well we don't have to believe in everything because if you don't believe in it, that's fine. Look at the disciples. They were all in the boat. Who's the one who got out of the boat? Right. There was only one because that's he right. had the belief. But that's that didn't right. mean, that didn't discount the rest. Didn't that's discount because right. John was in that boat. That's but right. there has to be something inside of us where we say, okay, so we're just going to pray, thy will be done. That's it. It's a simple prayer. We, and we don't have to negotiate, think about it. There's nothing because, well, the reason, <laughs> the reason I'm saying it is because in this vision, there was an angel who went across the wheat field and she had a banner or the angel had a banner and the banner said, thy will be done. Mm. That's why I'm bringing this up Amen. because I think if we can start a, I almost feel like saying like a, thy will be done movement. <laughs> You know what I mean? That we can just start praying into thy will be done with everything that God wants to do. Because right. like you said, John, he loves everybody. He That's doesn't right. want anybody to perish. That's not his heart. So we don't have That's to correct. worry about his will wanting to destroy right. and to, right. you know, eliminate. No, his will is to restore and to bring back into order. That's, That's what he wants to do. And when you keep talking about that, that the division, God always brings me back to the Tower of Babel mm -hmm. because it said with this, they were all speaking the same language. They all had the same focus. They all had the same goal. And he said, with this, there is nothing that they can't do. But church, we haven't gotten that message yet. We That's haven't right. gotten that message yet. You know, right. it's like everybody wants to be everybody wants to be right everybody wants to be heard everybody wants to be seen but guess what that's not thy will be done that's, right. that's, that's right. your will be done oh that's i'm right. sorry i'm preaching i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry good, i just got a little um, i just got going. myself a little bit of a i because ser because seriously it's either yeah. thy will or my will that's right i'm choosing thy that's just right. saying that's right you know right. It's all good. It's all good, Lisa. You're doing good. Keep going. <laughs> no, you know, Jesus is all about the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you're seeing now in over the last two years is out of the abundance out of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you're seeing is the amount of people that come against the system, what God yeah. has put in place. You can see the bitterness and anger in their heart. All right. And it's just, it's, um, it's amazing what's what's coming out, what's being revealed, all right? And you can see because th there isn't anything, there's not anything positive and everything is negative, whether it's lies, accusation, this, yeah. that, but you can see the heart. I've never heard one person come against the president that actually had a proper motive. Um, the, all the motives are incorrect. The agendas are, are, wrong, are, are wrong, but exposes the heart condition of man. And that's what's happening here. Um, whenever God ever intervened in our life, what happens? He intervenes in the heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have to accept him. Okay. We have to make decisions. You got to make a decision first and he changes the heart. He doesn't change the heart before you, before you make the decision. Because the, the word of God says that he's a gentleman and he's not, a, he's a respecter of persons. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He who hears the knock opens the door, lets me in. He just doesn't come in your heart. You've got to make that choice. But the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you, you, you're seeing the spiritual condition, especially with the, the, the bride. Oh, come on, God. All right. The bride. All right. So you cannot speak. 
any in any person that says they're following Christ and are saying that they're a believer and are speaking negativity. First of all, negativity is not a characteristic or attribute of Jesus. He doesn't have any negativity or he doesn't speak junk. All right. Because if he if because you know what, we're not perfect. And there's so much stuff in us, we fall short every day. But when you see the bride where we are right now, all over the map, and spewing junk that we're supposed to be, it's like, like I said, the brothers coming against Joseph, spewing junk, all right, and, and wanting everything they possibly can to what? Silence the voice. Yeah. The enemy always wants to silence the voice. Because he knows, he doesn't know when, and he doesn't know the blueprint. He knows there's something going on that's going to bring some sort of a restoration or some sort of a breakthrough in this nation. And what is what does the enemy do? I'm going to, come on, God. I'm going to try. There's three entities right now. I want to tell you something. Come on, God. There's three power sources in this nation and all over the world. Let's just use this nation. Three. You've got the Lord. You've got the enemy, which is the prince of the air, and you've got the president, who is the highest form of power in the natural realm. Okay, so what does the enemy do? I'm going to do whatever I can to, to dishonor the very thing that's in position. All right, because, and come on, God, it doesn't matter who's in position, who's in place. Okay, it's the government of God. And when you have, and the Lord says you've got to respect and honor that that's that what that's an authority. So he whatever he tries to do, he tries to dishonor, and I said before, discredit. And now he's not using the, he's not just using our government, he's not just using a party, he's using the bride to dishonor that's that which is in place. And that's why you're seeing so much confusion and so much turmoil in this nation even more because the bride is actually helping facilitate it but is it a bad thing it's not actually a bad thing because it's it's allowing things to take place that will actually facilitate and reveal the very hidden things and god takes all that stuff and clears it out of the way and it's the separation of the sheets and the goats come on okay the wheat and the tear come on all right, and he now then he can separate things. God is in the separation business, so people can move forward. Okay, what? Come on, Israel could have walked on water that day and went across to the land, but what did God do? I have to separate things in order for you to go through. It might be real difficult, it might be real hard, but I'm separating it on purpose so I can swallow up the enemy. And that's what Come you're on. about to see in the next, before this 10 years up, you're yep. going to see a separation of yep. those that hear and those that don't hear in yep. the bride. Yep. And, and the Lord's going to create a path. And then in a moment's time, the enemy is going to get swallowed up and a great victory is going to take place. And then you're going to see in the second tenure, in the second term, an incredible realm of peace, harmony, and the, and there, I've said this before so many times too. I'm gonna say again, the relationship that he has with Netanyahu is absolutely critical in this nation. The alliance and the and and the friendship will go down in historic ramifications, historic. And if they're joined at the hip, it's called Hebron. And as long as he's connected to Netanyahu, and see Netanyahu, there was some stuff coming against him too over the course of the last few weeks. How the enemy's trying to discredit him. They're trying to break this, this connection, but nothing can break it. Nope. Nope. So we're going to see some very crazy, awesome stuff. But yep. uh we there's no worries and no, there's no need to can be concerned because yep. uh it's 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 just like puzzle pieces being put in place. Sometimes it's hard to get that puzzle piece in place, it takes yep. a little bit more effort. We always try to work on the outside in, don't we, Lisa? When we put a puzzle yep. together, you yep. got to put the clouds and the edges first because it's easy. <laughs> then when it starts, yep. then when you get start to get inside, it gets, you know what? It gets hard. It get, that's where we are. That's where we yep. are right now. But you're going to see some crazy movement over the course of the next year and a half. Well, it's interesting that you talked about um, Israel because before you even started to bring up Netanyahu, the Lord was starting to show me that actually – if you think about the, the book of Esther, and if you look at how Esther was for such a time as this, and we always think of Esther as, as woman, but what if that Esther anointing is actually our president? Because if you think about it, 
What was Haman trying to do? Haman was trying to destroy. He was trying to eliminate. He was trying to decimate the Israelites. Okay. And if we look and see at what was happening in our country, that they were coming against Christianity. They were coming against the church. They were, they were saying no more Bibles in, in the, in, in what's it called in um, courtrooms. No more. You can't put nativities. You can't say Merry Christmas. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't all this political correctness, all this stuff. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. They were coming against the Israel's. They were saying that you know they shouldn't have this and they shouldn't have that and they wanted them destroyed. So what if, what if as much as they say that uh, our president is a Cyrus, what if he is also carrying an Esther anointing that he is for such a time as this, that there is going to be just like everybody was planning because Haman was going, he actually built a, a, um, a hang- gallows. He, gallows. He hang- the gallows for for Mordecai, which was Esther's uncle, to hang him because he hated him. So they were preparing to hang him, just like they were preparing to hang our president. But guess what happened? The hands of God, through the prayers, through the intercession, and that is where we come in, through our prayers through our intercession, that's where we can turn right. the table. That's right. where those who are trying to hang our president that's get correct. hung themselves. They get that's hung correct. up in court. They're going to get hung up in, in trying to get stuff passed. They're going to get hung up. It's going to, there. I just keep seeing like the phone just getting hung up. Just kidding. <laughs> sorry, I'm not taking your call. But you, you see, you see where there's two parties with Esther on each mm-hmm. side. You got yes. Mordecai and you got and you got Haman. That's two right. parties. One That's sees, right. one doesn't see. That's right. Okay, Mordecai knew that there was a risk, but mm-hmm. he also saw that there was a purpose for this woman's life. Okay, right. and that she was going to be used. He knew it. He saw it. He the God gave him the vision, but he had That's to right. push it. And that's like the bride today constantly interceding for this president. Then that's you have right. Haman that can't see it. He actually thinks he's going to be able to defeat it. And then you have Esther that takes a risk, boldness, goes Mm -hmm. into the king's court, okay, and, 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 you know, requests the king, okay, and she's not afraid. Realistically, she should have lost her life, all right? She should have, you know, been banished or whatever. Um, But she went in and she did something that was not common. And the king, what did the king do? You know, he honored that. Simply because he he honored the boldness, and see, so you got an individual like President Trump who's got so bold. Sometimes it can be too bold, all right. <laughs> and we still we ask for wisdom, and we pray for his wisdom, and also for his heart every day to be softened more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Okay, but he's still human. Yeah. Okay. And I also said this before. You got to you got to understand this. This is a big game. Yes, it okay? is. Okay. Some of this isn't rocket are science. High. And the stakes okay? are high. Everyone in Washington. And every person that's not against, that's not for this man already knew this man. They already knew his character. They already knew his DNA. They already knew what he was about. They already knew he was harsh. They already knew that he was straightforward. It's nothing new. All right. And the reason why they are, the reason, the whole purpose of why they were and why they were afraid of this man is simply because you can't control him. The enemy, okay is intimidated by individuals and believers that he cannot control. All right. And this is an individual that is not controlled by man. All right. And now we we see, okay, where it's actually creating a, creating scenarios with the body, with both sides of the coin, both sides of the believers that believe in, that believe for him and, and some of them that don't, are not, not for him, but against him. But they're not seeing. They're not seeing the way God is seeing. And that's what I said before. If you're not hearing as the body of Christ, Lisa, the mm-hmm. body of Christ, and this is what the prophetic is all about. The prophetic is about is, is also helping people hear the voice of God. All right. If you're a believer, if there's two people in the room and one's hearing one voice and one's hearing another, one's hearing the wrong voice. That's right. And if you're hearing the wrong voice, what voice are you hearing? We're supposed to be hearing the same voice. That's right. But like I said before, before this term is out, before this first term is over, you're going to see a bride all of a sudden shift gears. 
and it's going to steamroll. And there's going to be some monumental accomplishments in Washington and in this nation before the first term is over. I agree. I so agree with that. And, you know, I was talking, it's interesting because the, the where I work, there are a lot of women who come in who who don't like necessarily like our president. So I don't say anything, but then there are some others who are very quiet about it, but they know how I feel. And so we, we talk and they're like, you know, I just don't understand why he does X, Y, and Z. And I said to him, I said, what does a magician do? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, what does a magician do? I said, a magician's always saying, watch this hand right here. Watch this hand over here. So you're not paying attention to what's going on behind the scenes. You're paying attention. Look at this hand. Look at this hand. Don't look at that one. Just, just look at this one. So what I start, what the Lord started to show me is that our president, he, because, I, and, and the Lord said that they're going to start calling him Teflon Don <laughs> because <laughs> nothing sticks to this man. That's what he told me. He said, nothing sticks to him. He, they're going to start calling him Teflon Don. And because no matter what they try to stick to him, it's not going to stick. But he has put himself up front to be, to be looked at, to be, yeah, to be true. like, to take all the stuff so he can get the stuff done in the back. If that's anybody correct. truly thinks that our president thinks that he knows exactly what to do and he's doing everything all by himself, then you are you're just believing what you're hearing because that's, that's not the truth. Because if in order for him, like you were saying, everybody knew who he is. You don't get to that level of power. You don't get to that level of, of authority. And you do not get to that level of influence if you mistreat people along the way, because it eventually is going to come out. It's eventually going to, to start. It's never, it's never, ever, ever been out. I mean, you heard about stuff about Martha Stewart and some other people, Rosie O'Donnell, you heard about like some of the ways that they treated other people. It was out in the news long, 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 early, 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 never, ever heard anything when he was on The Apprentice. They never said anything. It was nothing, nothing, nothing. However, he said, I can take this. I can take this. So you guys do what you have to do. And there's more stuff getting done because if, if you think, if you ever watched any of The Apprentice shows, he always knew how to make the ratings better. He knew exactly how to tweak. He knew how to garner the attention of the audience. That's why it was such a great show. That's why everybody watched it because he knows, he knows people. He is a people watcher. He knows what, to, like he just, and he follows. Well, he any follows. other, any, yeah. Go ahead. Any individual. Yeah. This isn't rocket science either. Any individual right. that watches this man in his presidency yeah and be able to withstand what he's going through oh yeah um the, the normal joe could not make it no way okay mm -hmm. the stress would eventually just tear you up yep but this actually may he actually feeds off of this and makes him stronger no <laughs> one's gonna crack him yeah yeah no one's gonna bring him down mm -hmm. okay this that this that isn't gonna it's not gonna happen and nope. you're 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 actually foolish trying to bring this man down, as I said, yep. simply because it's, it's never going to happen. Nope. And not because he's strong. The reason why he has strength is because God's given him the strength. Absolutely. I was, God's yeah. given him strength. Yep, 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 yep. Actually, um, I think that, it was Morris Morello who just, didn't he Didn't he write something? He just released a word yes. about the supernatural strength right. that God it's, has given. It's all not, God. Yeah, it's not only to him, though. God has also given his family of supernatural course. strength especially his wife his wife well she melania. prays melania, melania prays all the okay. time are you kidding me if you were a wife seeing her husband oh, getting no. ridiculed 24 hours a day seven days a week there's no yeah. relent no there's no, no relent they, yeah but you got and even the children yeah um but it's amazing because they, they've been given there's such a fire around them such a protection yep around their yep, ear gates right. And their heart. Yep, I agree. And it goes 100%. to show you the very capacity that they have and the mm -hmm. character that they have that, you know, because the any nor any other individual would, would crack. Yep. But that's how you can see, you know, even like I said, even with Joseph. Joseph yep. was in a, was in, when he was in the pit, should have cracked. When he yep. was when he was, you know, thrown in prison, he should have cracked. 
when he was accused by Potiphar's wife, he should have cracked. When he was in prison and, you know, and he he prophesied, you know, to the two individuals um, and they left. Remember what Joseph said? You know, put in a good word for me. Yeah, don't forget about me. (laughs) He started to get weary, but then it was two more years. Yeah. Yeah. Two more years before he came out. He should have cracked because any yep. any other individual said, I'm done, God. Yep. I can't. But this guy just keeps going. Yep. Okay. And yep. he keeps getting stronger. Yep. And it's a representation of how much God loves people and yep. how he wants you to succeed. He's never. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, Lisa, at the end of the day, as a as a people, we don't put our trust in man. No. You know, my trust isn't in a president. My trust yep. is in God. That's right. But the president of the United States, no matter who it is, it doesn't dictate my future. That's right. It's not going to stop what I'm going to be. Not going to stop right. where I'm going to live. Not going to stop my vision. Okay. The only people, the only one that's going to stop your vision is you. That's right. Okay. The Bible says without vision, my people perish. All right. And the reason for that is, is that if you put your trust in man and you become codependent on man, you're going to fail. Yep. And you're going you're gonna to train wreck real hard. And if, you right. wanna, and if you want to, and if you want to, you know, put all your trust in natural things, come on. All mm-hmm. right. So it's a very simple methodology. Christianity and, and Christ is a very simple thing. It was never meant to be complex. And you know what? God releases the mysteries and he, give, he releases the mysteries. And if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear, it comes to, be, it comes to a reality. And you know what? This is what it's all about. This whole thing is about freedom. Okay. Of the captives, liberty. All right. For the prisoners and vice versa. It's all about people being, you know, free and set free and their hearts being set free. Come on, God. Yep. One hundred percent. And I think that what we're going to start to what we're going to start to see is we're going to start to see some some huge, huge changes. One of the things that uh, somebody just released a word. It's an old word. It's um, from Bob Jones and the Lord said to Bob Jones, he said that people are cursing our country. And he says, and I want you to start blessing our country. Come on. And so he said, I want you to start singing God bless America land that I love. And it was interesting. Cause I was, I was actually at a, um, at a house event where they we were interceding. We were interceding for the country. And as we were interceding, I started to hear God bless America. So I'm hearing it in my head. And then the person whose house we were at, she goes over and she starts to play God bless America. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, he said, Lisa, he goes, I love America. He says, America was consecrated and given to me. If you think about it, when Plymouth Rock, when they stand and when they they actually landed, they gave thanks to God. It was a Christian. It was dedicated to Christ. It was dedicated to God. In fact, Thanksgiving was a, a thank you. It was a it was a feast. It was just like um, um, what is um the fe- tabernacle? Mm-hmm. It's the feast of tabernacle, and it was to give thanks and praise for a right. year that the, that God sustained them. So our country. And our forefathers, George Washington, prayed for our country. In fact, he had a national day of prayer. If you look at some of the greatest men in our country, they prayed, they sought God, they humbled themselves, and they looked for direction. And that's That's what I'm seeing is happening with our president. Because if you look, who does he have around him? He mm-hmm. has praying men and women. As That's soon right. as somebody comes over, the first, he takes his position, head goes down, hands go out. He's ready to receive. There is a That's humbleness right. when you are getting prayed for. When you put your hands out, that means you are ready to receive. His hands are not down. He's not, his hands are open. I'm ready to receive. That is That's humility. Right. Whether we want to face it, I think that part of what we're going to see after all this stuff is exposed is we're going to actually see the real man behind the man. Oh, that's 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 the dream that we are going to start to see not the facade. We're going to start to see the person who's hidden inside. That's not Joseph. That is Joseph. I didn't recognize who he was, but the person behind the person that was behind the veil was their brother. That's it. Okay. That's and, it. And who loved them. Yes. They just couldn't see it. 
But Joseph also saved because like you were talking about how the enemy will try to cause all things because he only has, he doesn't know what's coming the next day. So he, he wanted to destroy Israel. So everybody always wants to destroy Israel. Look at it. Because the reason that Israel was always wanted to be destroyed is because that's where Jesus came from. So if you got rid of Israel, if you got rid of all the Jews, then Jesus couldn't have come because of all the prophecies, you know? And so that's why the enemy was so intent, his intention by using people. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy that's uses right. people. So, right. you know, I always used to tell my kids, who are you going to work for today? You work for Jesus. You're going to work for the devil. You make your choice every day, come you on. know? So, but with that, so with that, it's like we we come into these places where we say, okay, why is there such an attack? Why is there an attack on our children? Why is there an attack on the, on the identity? Why is there an attack in marriages? Why is there an attack in our finances? Why they, you know, guys, the, the enemy doesn't do anything new. But you, so you have to understand that where the attack is the greatest is because that's where God is going to move the strongest. That's right. So if you're getting attacked in a, in a certain area, it's because that is where your strength is. It's not because it's a weakness. No, that is where your strength is. And that's huh. what he wants to take down. That's why he kept going after the same things over Amen. and over and over. Amen. It's good, man. It was well, I want to say, is there any, do you have any other new words? Uh, not yet. Ah, I'll, probably, but coming. I'll have something tomorrow. Oh, I know go. something's being released tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can't release yeah. it yet. Yeah. Okay. So now John, if people, now I'm just going to, I'm just going to put this out there. So I know you have your, your website, but I, I think that you need to like, Kind of like, I don't know, how, how are you getting all these words out? I know you're doing it through Facebook, and I know that it's also on Instagram, because I've seen it on Instagram. So people right. can follow you on Instagram. They can follow you on Facebook. Right. But, and Twitter, too? Yeah. Okay. Everything so goes can, on Twitter, all three. Okay. So you guys can follow him. And then also, if you go to his website, you can, because you post them there, too. Yeah, everything gets put on the website. Um, everything's archived for the last years. Okay. Um, you know, and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, but everything is all out there in our, you know, on our on our website, WordPress.com. Um, you can just it just goes down for years. Yeah, you know, so now you can when, just see it. Are you going to be? Because I'm seeing a book. So are you writing a book about all these prophecies that God's been giving you and how you've been standing yeah. with the yeah. president? That yeah. that that book's coming. Yeah, um, yeah. very soon. Yeah, and yeah, um, I see it. you know, I was given a book. Um, Several years ago when I was preaching, I used to preach. I used to be on the road like 36 weekends out of the year. And um, somebody come up to me and said, uh, you know, you know, the book, The Journal of Unknown Prophet. Um, I was given this book and the Lord spoke to me years. He said, in years down the road, you will release a book of all the words that you put out, mm -hmm. um, especially regarding the nation and the government mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as a. Uh, as something to go back to um, and all the things that came to pass. So it's, 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 uh, it's getting there. Um, we're seeing it, but um, I don't believe the book will be out until at least the first term is over. Okay. There is a very, very important element here in the nation regarding this first term. This first term is the, is the, is the, the turmoil term. Mm. It's the shaking term. Okay. The second term, the second term is the is the water is calm as glass. Yeah, the feasting. So you can't. Yes, there's a there's there's a there's a warring, and then there's a ceasefire. Mm, that's and good. in the second term is where you cease fire, and the enemy doesn't just stop; the enemy retreats. Wow. And that's what you're going to see in the second term. There's going to be hardly any opposition. Yeah. Because of the the enemy is going to run out of artillery yep. by the time the first term is over. You're going to see a bunch more stuff yeah. before this term's over. But the second term is a great, a great calm and a great harvest where the storehouses get filled. So, so the other thing too, you know, there have been. I don't know if you follow the whole Q thing, the QAnon, and if you follow some of the um, the different voices that are are speaking about what God is saying. The, regarding our country and, and our president, there, of course, is going to be the um, 
how do I put this? There is going to, to come the Haman day. I'll call it the Haman day. Oh, sure. Where where those who have been trying to who have been to have been doing really bad things are going to be held accountable. So because oh, yeah. I think there are a lot of people who are are waiting for it. But I do wanna I do wanna say this that God still loves those people. God still loves those people, as John was saying before. And so as much as we'd like to see like, you know, people, you know, get their, get their, what's due to them. We, we really, as a church, we really need to just pray for them to pray that in that right. process, that their hearts get turned in that process, that they, they see what they've done and they, they repent and they ask for forgiveness and they're able to come back because God is such a good father. He wants everybody to come back. So we, right. so we need to actually pray for those who we know are about to get what, you know, and I, I'm not saying that that's not deserved because I think as more and more stuff gets revealed, it's going to be people are going to want they're they're going to want people to to suffer because some of the stuff that God's been showing me that's going to be revealed is it's not good. But I think if we pray, if we pray for for peace, for for greater understanding, and if we pray for those who were used, because. It's just because, as as I said earlier, when we started, I said that, you know, there's light and there's dark and there are people who work in darkness. So they don't understand what they're doing. They 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 think what they're doing is right. Their minds are kind of they think that it's a that it's a good thing because they've been they've been in dark. I think that isn't there um, uh, that when you're in dark, your eyes start to adjust. Well, if eventually. You, yeah, uh, it takes you get a while. In there, it takes a few minutes, but then eventually yeah. you can start to see a bit. You can start to but see it's it. But it's an adjustment process. Exactly. And, and so, um, but you can't fight it. Nope. Mm -mm. You just let it come naturally. That's right. And then what happens is that when the light comes on, what's the first thing that you do? Come you on. cover your eyes. You cover your eyes because it's too bright. You can't light handle. always, and I've released this word too. Well, parts of these words is light always conquers darkness. That's right. It doesn't matter what's going on in the nation. There's That's so right. much light right now. That's right. There's so much light you know, in the nation and God's doing some amazing things. It's awesome yes. what God's doing. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, like I said, this isn't about a president. It's not nope. about a president. It never was. Nope. nope. It's not about even about a government. It's about people. That's and right. what's the enemy doing? The enemy's trying to literally implode people. He's mm -hmm. trying to cause people to hate each other. That's and right. he's doing everything he possibly can to do it. That's right. But it's not going to work. It's only going to backfire on the enemy because the Lord doesn't set us up to fail. <laughs> He sets us up to be victorious. And you know what? Why We're living in the best days of our lives, best days of history, best day of anything. It's awesome what God's doing. That's All right. right. It's and But you know what? Those who put their trust in the Lord, you know, there's no worries, no concerns. That's so, it. It's all good, man. Come on. That is good. This was fun. It was great, wasn't it? And, and you know what? We didn't have any interruptions. We didn't have any, like, no, nothing. Nothing happened. So thank uh -uh. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come <laughs> thank on, thank you. you. Jesus. Thank you, Lisa, for having me tonight. Oh, absolutely. And I was just gonna say, um, John, love to have you come back. Um, if people want to also follow you on CBN, because sometimes you do stuff with that. That's correct. correct. And That's so correct. If, so they can also if they go to your website, they can go to John John Nichali dot wordpress.com so you guys can go and check him out you can leave it you can read all his blogs you can read um any kind of uh prophecies that he's had you can go back through and you can kind of get to know him he has some books correct that's correct so Our prophetic he, they, manual and yeah. my and my book that i wrote about overcoming adversity Say so there's two books that you can get if you also would like to um sew into his mystery a ministry you can also i think there is a uh button that they can do yep. that so on our so WordPress if, site. On the WordPress site. So yep. if you guys are interested in sewing into um, John Natalie's ministry, you can because you know there is. It takes time to to spend time and to get things delivered. And he also is. Um, you're a chaplain with the NYPD, but I know it's um, in, in not the, not New York State, but with the Suffern PD. Suffern PD. In, sorry, in mm -hmm. in Rockland County. Mm -hmm. But I'm also with our law enforcement organization, USLEO. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting ready to to partner, and it looks like with the NYPD. The OLC, um, and, I wasn't wrong then. <laughs> and doing some work <laughs> there. <laughs> um, yeah, God's definitely opened up some doors yeah. in New York. I was actually just in New York um, at the first precinct on Tuesday. 
Yes. And uh, right next to the the, the Freedom Tower. Yes. And uh, we we were just off. We just got off the phone with them today. So okay. it looks like God has opened up a door. But our law enforcement organization is awesome simply because we can present the gospel, mm -hmm. being a chaplain and a minister, prophetically. Mm -hmm. I'm not just with financial aid, but also counseling, mm -hmm. and um, and and bringing in uh, the capability of healing the heart. Oh, I love that. And uh, not just LEOs, but everybody. Yeah. So uh, have a great passion. God definitely opened up the door. That's why when I saw the picture of Manhattan behind you, um, God just opened up the door in Manhattan for us. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'm really excited because at the end of the day, what we're all about is helping people, yep. healing their hearts, and yep. being everything that they, they're called to be. Yeah, and, and that is kingdom. Not just believers. That's right. That you know, when you have a kingdom mentality, you are working for the king, not for yourself. Listen, listen. Jesus spent more time outside the building than in. That's right. And, you know and that's what? what you're doing. It's outside the building. Not interested in staying in the building. <laughs> no, Come no. On, and God. what's what's really fun, John, is that when um, I got together with a bunch of my um, my my girlfriends, we actually went into the city and. January, we actually went into one of the precincts and we went, actually, we, we prayed over a bunch and we prophesied over a bunch of different police officers. We went to, um, where was it? We went to the United States embassy <laughs> and we, there were guards and they came out and we, we gave them a scroll and we prophesied over them. We went into a precinct and we prophesied over them and we, we gave them scrolls and we just told them that we loved them and we prayed for them and we explained, they read the scroll and we told them what the scroll meant. And because um, there were some pre-written scrolls. So, and so we just handed them out to different people that the Lord told us to do it. And we, we actually blessed a lot of police officers that, that one day I, we didn't really understand why, but that's where God had us. And we just started to bless them and to pray over them. And so there's something that God really wants to do. It's because of what's been happening. It's because I'm, I'm just seeing it is that the Lord is saying that he's going to turn people back to respect and honor because come we've come into a place where we have dishonored those who have who should be honored because they lay down their lives and That's so correct. we have to honor those who lay down our lives for us so whether it's That's the correct. military whether it's our police whether it's our firemen and so anybody who lays down their life for for strangers we need to honor that because That's there's correct. a sacrifice that they're willing to do because Amen. they don't know each day when they wake up if they're going to be going home that's right. They don't know. I have two brothers, two um, uh, uh, brother-in-laws who were both in law enforcement. So they both have retired. Thank God. But still, when they used to go, when they used to go, I used to pray for them that they would come home come because on. you just don't know. And right. so I believe that's what the Lord is just doing is he's really trying to bring back that honor, trying to bring back honor also to our um, to our law enforcement, but also to those who are in charge, like our president, because there has been the spirit of rebellion that has just been running rampant. And God is about to, to muzzle that mouth. I'll tell you that right now. Come on. Yeah. Amen. So this that was so much good. fun. This Thank is so you, good. Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in for this special night of Touch by Prayer with John Natale. If you'd like to go and check out his stuff, you can go to johnitale.wordpress.com. So thanks a lot. And please, next time you have a word or you'd like to come back on, just give me a shout. It was awesome, Lisa. Thanks so much for having us. It was awesome tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in. Just remember to go out and touch someone. Good night. Bless you, everybody. Good night.